Rami Khoury is the editor at large of the Lebanon Daily Star. He joins us now live from Beirut. Has the repression, as far as you can see, and the regime itself reached a point of no return? I mean, from what we've been seeing on the ground, can we conclude that the repression will continue unabated? Well, the, the basic uh, level of violence that you see in Syria has been going on for months now and has been escalating in spurts and then quiets down a little bit and then picks up and keeps moving from town to town. Um, most people that you talk to in Syria uh, who are following events and are knowledgeable and are well connected with the situation believe that the, the regime has really crossed the point of no return. It's very difficult to see how this regime can uh, retreat now and move into a serious political uh, dialogue or reform process uh, that will have any credibility. The people on the street uh, are losing and have pretty much lost any kind of uh, trust in the government. It's extremely difficult to see this uh, changing, but there has to be a 1% chance that the violence can die down and there can be a peaceful resolution to this conflict, whether that but means the Ba'ath Party stays or the Assad family. But what, what could indeed compel the regime to change its course of action? Because international pressure doesn't seem to be working very much. And let's face it, there isn't much appetite within the international community, certainly within the United Nations Security Council, to, to push for a more uh, robust uh, resolution that would call upon the Assad regime to leave. And we know countries like China and Russia aren't willing to push very far, having seen what the military operation in Libya has amounted to. So, so where does it go from here? It's unlikely but not impossible that we're going to have international military intervention. That's a very, very unlikely situation. Uh, more likely is that you're going to get more intense and uh, complete economic uh, pressure. Probably uh, in a desperate move, you would see the international community cutting off the energy transport uh, lines in and out of the country so Syria couldn't ship energy products and oil and couldn't import. That would hurt a lot of Syrians, but it would probably bring the regime to its knees. The knowledgeable people in Syria that I've talked to in the last few days tell me that they probably expect the government to last for maybe five, six, seven months with the present funding that it has. So economic vulnerability is probably the biggest Achilles heel right now. The second one is that the regional powers, the Saudis and the Turks most importantly, but also the Arab League and others in the region have now weighed in and clearly told the Syrians that they've got to stop using uh, military violence against their own people, that if there is a security challenge, it has to be dealt with through legitimate ways, not attacking entire neighborhoods. But, but have so countries, the, the regional, but pressure, have regional countries uh, and even other countries like the United States with considerable leverage uh, on countries in the region used that sufficiently to put political pressure? Uh, it's not in the interest of the United States, for example, is it, to see uh, perhaps a, a different kind of uh, government I in Syria? There are some who argue that it may precisely be in its own strategic interest to keep a bleeding regime like Assad in place uh, because it, it plays into the, into the interest of its own ally in the region, Israel. And the Arab countries, as you know, have been making some statements. Some have recalled their ambassadors. But there's quite a bit of Arab mutism uh, and Arab inaction. And a lot of Arab hypocrisy as well. And hypocrisy is the, is the hallmark of, say, American, European, and Russian policy in the region. Everybody here is drenched in mountains and mountains of hypocrisy, double standards, and insincerity. Nobody comes out of this uh, looking good. The West and Israel are very happy with the Assad regime if it just tones down the violence a little bit, like they're happy with all of the very right-wing, uh, autocratic, non-democratic Arab regimes. The problem is these regimes no longer represent very many people people in their countries. Some of them have been changed, others are challenged, and they will be changed. So we have a complete new situation going on here. But what is critical, I think, in Syria this week is that we've seen for the first time the convergence of regional pressure, domestic uh, uh, uprising against the government, and serious international uh, pressure. If those three come together, they will probably, and combined with greater economic uh, uh, sanctions, they will probably bring the government to its knees. And this is what happened in uh, the spring of 2005 when Lebanese popular resistance, regional Arab pressure, and the UN Security Council together forced the Syrians out of Lebanon. Otherwise, the Syrians would not have gone out. But when those three factors come together, you, they have no more choice. And some are wondering if the time has come, indeed, for the Syrian opposition to begin changing its tactics as well. But we do have to leave it here for now. Rami Khoury, thank you very much.
for joining us.